Hello and God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water where we look at a daily Bible verse because just as we need that bread and that food and water to sustain our physical bodies to survive, we also need the spiritual bread and water to grow our spirits. So we're going to give you that bread of life and the living water because Jesus said that man cannot live by bread alone but of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God so that's what we're going to look at as we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness so we need to be filled with God's word and today we're going to be looking at a chapter that for today is kind of exactly what fits perfect and I don't mean this in a condemning way, but Habakkuk one thirteen. Now are pure of pure eyes than to behold evil, and cannot look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that dealt treacherously, and holdeth thy tongue, when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? See here we see that God is holy and clean and righteous and he cannot even look at the wickedness of people. God cannot even look with complacency on evil. God's holiness cannot endure the sight of wickedness, nor is mercy the sight of man's m misery. And he permits this evil man to afflict the holy seed. So we, I've, I've heard this verse mentioned several times about how God can't look on evil. He can't look on sin. And I think that's perfect for today as in the day people are going to be dressing up as some form of darkness, not condemning, but as with every day, we all mess up, we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. That sin separates us from God because God is holy and sin and can't can't be with God. So for us, God to look at us while we are in sin, we don't you know we don't want Him to see that part of us. That's why we prayed and we asked Jesus in our life and we repent of everything we've done and we ask that our sins are covered. So that when God looks at us, he sees Jesus in us, not us, the fallen person who misses the mark. And when Satan comes to accuse the brethren and he comes to accuse you and say, you know God, this person says they love you. But they messed up again. Look what they did today. Jesus says, Father, I know that they did wrong today. But I paid for that. I covered that. It's paid for. And he paid for it with his blood. Jesus is the mediator. He's the one who intercedes for us when we're accused by Satan. Jesus is the one that steps up and says, That's alright, that's all right, Father. I've got that paid. So as God looks on us, we want him to see Christ in us and not us filthy in our sin.
I think that's a beautiful verse. And I've heard it several times. I guess Habakkuk is not a book that Lord really showed, brought stuff out to me yet because I didn't remember where this was. It just happened the Lord revealed it to me earlier yesterday. And I just think it's beautiful. Because it shows that God can't look at us when there's evil in our life, when there's sin. And you say, well, what's beautiful about that? Because in Jesus, his son, God in the flesh, he came and he bore our sins, iniquities, transgressions, everything that we have done. He bore it all on his body and it was nailed to that cross with him. And now it's covered under his precious, beautiful blood that he shed on that cross for us. And he died that horrific death. And I pray you got something out of it. If you did, give God glory. Like I said, comment and tell us what you like about the verse in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to suggest a scripture that we bring in the next in, you know, in a future episode, leave that in the comments below. If you'd like to join me on for a video and discuss the verse and get in touch with me, we can work something out. And now I just want to tell you the good news. In case you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation. The art door is closing. There is not much more time left, but you still have an opportunity for when that trumpet calls, when that trumpet sounds, to be caught up and to meet Jesus in the air and not be left here for this real life nightmare, real life horror movie that's come on the air, worse than any horror movie you could ever imagine, and this time you can't turn off the TV because it's too scary. It will be your life. And, only, and the movie will only end when you take your last breath. So the good news is that we all mess up. There's none of us that are perfect. Sin separates us from God. We all have the knowledge of God. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we all have the knowledge of God. How do I know that? Because there's this void, this God-shaped hole, as people like to call it. There's this void in our life that we try to chase with drugs, sex, alcohol, whatever it may be. We try to chase it. Try to fill that void. Try to make enough money so that we can fill that void. Try to be popular so that we can fill that void. But nothing can fill that void. That's how we all know God. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we, we know Him. And we know Him because there's that void. But we can't be with God. Because when the, when the fall happened, there was this sin in the world. And it separated us. It, it broke it. Let's say that we, us and God were on level ground and there was an earthquake and it split and put the valley between us and God. That valley is sin. Sin come in there and tore tore away at where we can have a relationship with God. Because God is holy and sin can't be with him. So we can't get to him because we've got sin in our life. Sin separates from him. But Jesus, who was fully God and fully man at the same time was a real person was really born of a virgin we know the verse in Isaiah also Genesis chapter 3 15 talks about the virgin birth he was really born of a virgin he was really a man he wasn't a spirit and he really was born of a virgin Joseph wasn't his biological father he was his stepfather. 
He lived an absolutely perfect life, never sinned once. He was tempted in all ways. Women may have been throwing themselves at him, but he wasn't tempted. People tried to get, probably tried to give him all this money. You know, people wanted him to be the king and everything. He never, he never sinned. And why? Because blood has to be spilled for remission of sins. And blood can only be spilled by a perfect sacrifice. And Jesus was the perfect sacrifice that paid for our sins forever. One time deal. You know, the sheep, the, the goats and lambs and stuff that they would that the Jews would sacrifice in the Old Testament, they had to do that every year. Every time they messed up they had to bring a lamb or calf or something to sacrifice to pay that price. But Jesus paid that price once and for all. He went to the cross once you will never do it again because he paid for everybody. From the people who lived there in that day who would believe on what he did all the way up to today. 2,000 or so years later. Or almost 2,000, whatever you want to call it. He paid for our price. He rose from the dead because he's truly God. Hell couldn't, hell in the grave couldn't hold him down. Because he was truly God. He paid the price. So all we got to do is come Admit that we're a sinner, admit that we all mess up, that all we all fall short of the glory of God. You know, the Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar. We all sin, we all mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God, and all we gotta do is confess that we're a sinner. Admit that we're a sinner. Believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that he really was born of a virgin, was really a man and God at the same time. That he really went to the cross, was laid in the tomb for three days, rose again the third day, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. If we believe that, if we confess that with our, our mouth, and believe it in our heart. I say this all the time because I went through a period where I, would put, I, I believed in my mind who Jesus was. I confessed with my lips, but it wasn't in my heart. And you could. You can confess with your lips to anybody, and you can fool them. You can fool the pastors, you can fool me, but you can't fool God. Call out to him while you still have the opportunity, but do it from your heart, not from your lips. Not because I'm saying to do it, so you, so you say, Jesus, I mess up, I'm a sinner, I believe in who you are. Please forgive me for my sins, come into my life. Because I said, and then you're just going off living like the world. It's got to be in your heart to say, Lord, I'm tired of doing things myself. I can't, I can't do it on my own. I need a Savior. You got to come to that place in your heart, and you got to come to it soon, y'all. Because really and truly, we ain't got much time left. We seriously do not. At a dream Sunday morning. From the Lord and the interpretation came later and with and me and people who were about to go up in the rapture were laying mud bricks on the on the on the ground to, to dry and then I woke up but I knew it was people that are about to get raptured because these are his angels was kind of activating that incorruptible seed and I woke up and I thought well why are we laying bricks down and I felt the Holy Spirit tell me that I need to lay down a foundation for the people who will be who will reject Jesus and be left behind so I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to lay down a foundation and what I mean by that is every one of my videos I premiere them. They all, they all come, they all go live at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time here in America 
and and I always set it to premiere so it, it will let you know if you're following me on my channel you'll see this video is premiering tomorrow at this time or, or later on the day whatever it may be but I'm gonna but the Lord told me to put a foundation down to have some videos that are going to be uploading after we're gone and I don't know when that will be as long as I'm here they're going to premiere but the Lord, the Lord wants me to do some more a few that will go live after the, after the rapture then they won't they'll just show up they won't they won't premiere just all of a sudden at 10 o'clock there will be a video like I said I believe the Lord's telling me to sit to lay down a foundation for that people can go to when they when they think oh my god all my loved ones just disappeared and the world's telling them that aliens abducted us who were who wouldn't comply to what the world's agenda was so the aliens took the pe the bad people who wouldn't bow down to what the world had to say I'm not a tenfold hat person. I don't look for flying saucers. I look for Jesus. So, when when my when you start seeing videos, if you hear that millions of people are gone, and you start seeing videos that don't say they're premiering, and I'm going to do that with my Sunday videos. I don't know. Lord hadn't told me to do any um, sermon videos that will post later, but definitely these daily bread videos. I said to, to set a foundation of them. So that people who are here, they can, if the internet's still up, which I believe that it might be for at least for a little bit, that's probably why he wanted me to put this foundation down, is to just give these verses that people can look at and they can go, and it could turn them to God rather than taking the mark and being condemned to hell forever. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Leave a comment if, if you want to talk about the verse. Leave a comment on any verses you would like to see in a future episode. If you want to be on an episode, get in touch with me. We work something out. I love you. God bless you. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe out there today. As people will be probably going out and about. Just be careful. I myself will stay home. I'm not trying to be say anything crazy about this. I I don't have any kids. I don't have no family living by nearby, so for me, I'm just going to stay home and relax. But if you're out and about in it, perfectly fine. I'm not going to tell you that that, that you're sinning or whatever, because I mean, you don't answer to me; you answer to God. So I will just say, be careful, stay safe out there. I love y'all. God bless you. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. God willing.